Okay then, here they are. So you can see we have four different parts here. The first part is your domain. So the bit before the at symbol. Uh, for example, the boss, okay? Next we have the at symbol. Then the second domain part is the domain. For example, the Net Ninja or Gmail or whatever email you use. So it will be the boss at the Net Ninja. Then we have the dot after the domain. Then the third main part is the extension. So for example, com or org or in our case, .co. So we also have a fourth optional part, which is another dot and then the extension again. So .uk. So sometimes the extension is one word like .com or .org and sometimes it's two words like .co, .uk. This second part of the extension here, number four, that is going to be optional, right? This is going to be compulsory because they all have at least one extension like .com or something like that. But this second one is going to be optional, dot .something else. So the first part right here, your name. This can be any letters, numbers, dots, and or hyphens. So it could be something like Donna.Peters at something.com, right? So we can have dots in there or Donna-Peters at something.com. The second part, this domain, could be any letter, number, and or hyphens. So it could be at the net ninja or at the net hyphen ninja, okay? Number three, this third main part, the extension, can be any letters, but that's it. We don't have numbers in the extension or symbols, it's just letters, .com, .org, .net, .co.uk. And the fourth part over here is always going to begin with a dot, then any letters. So dot, then UK or dot, then something else, all right? So let's try creating these four different parts, plus the at and the dot, in our regular expression. Okay then, so let's start to put together this email regular expression. So let's place a comma after the last one. The final one is called email, and again, we'll just do our forward slashes first of all, then we'll do the carrot, and we'll do the dollar sign for the end as well. All right, so I've kept up this picture down here just for reference so we can refer to it to see what we need for each different part. So the first part over here, your name, is any letter, numbers, dots, and or hyphens. So first of all, what we'll do is enclose this in a set of parentheses just so we know what each section is. And they're going to be evaluated separately, but it's not going to have any effect on the overall evaluation of the string. Okay, so... Any letter, first of all, so we'll do A to Z. And by the way, these are all going to be lowercase. I'm not doing case insensitive stuff right here. So lowercase letters. Then any digit as well, 0 to 9. So for that, we can do backslash D for the digit meta character. We can also allow dots. Now, we can't just do a dot because remember, a dot has a special meaning in regex. It means any character whatsoever. We're not saying any character. We're saying the literal dot. So we have to escape the default special behavior by doing a backslash before it. Now you can see it turn red, meaning we've escaped that meaning, okay? So now we've said we're allowed lowercase letters, any digit, dots. We also wanted to allow hyphens, so we can place hyphen there as well. Now, what about the length? Well, who am I to say how many characters long your email address is? You might have the longest name in the world, right? So what we could do is just place the plus sign here, and that means it needs to be one letter long, but as many as you like, all right? So we'll keep it simple and do something like that. So there we go, that is the first part of the regular expression done. So now we've sorted this bit. Now next up is the at symbol, so let's place that in. That has to come next, and then the second part, we're gonna enclose in brackets as well. And the second part is the domain. And we've said here, it can be any letters, numbers, and or hyphens. So this isn't gonna to be too dissimilar to the first part. So again, a character set, any lowercase letter, A to Z. Also, we'll use the digit meta character, so backslash D, that's any number from zero to nine, and also any hyphen we said. And again, who knows how long this domain is? So I'll do a plus sign right here, which says this must be at least one character long, but as many characters long as need be. All right, so now we have the first two sections of this email regular expression done. We have your name and the domain, as well as this at symbol in between them. The next part, remember, is the dot. 
for example, Sean at the net ninja dot. And then we've got the extension to come after this. So let's open up our brackets for the next section. And this extension right here, number three, can only be letters. All right, so nothing else, just letters. So by the way, this dot, I've done it wrong. I fell into the trap. It needs to be escaped. Remember, the dot has um, a special meaning. So we need to escape that special meaning because we want the literal dot. So backslash before the dot. All right. So this next one, character set, just lowercase letters. So A to Z, and that's it. And again, what about the length? Well, this time, I'm not going to say as long as you want because I know no extensions are 20 characters long. Instead, we'll say between two and eight characters because I think the least is two and the most might be more than eight. I'm not so sure, but we'll just put in eight. All right. So dot com would work, dot org would work, dot net, uh, dot co. And then that is the third part done. Finally, we have the second part of the extension. And remember, this second part is optional. So if we take a look at this again, this second part begins with a dot and then it can be any letters again. So let us open up our parenthesis and then inside, first of all, the first character has to be a dot. So backslash dot to escape the normal behavior. So that will match a dot, then any letters. So A hyphen Z for any lowercase letter. Then the length of this is going to be again between two and eight characters long. I don't think any of the second part of the extension are more than eight or even eight in length. So that will get us dot UK or whatever. And remember, this second part is optional. So it doesn't have to actually be in the string that we're testing. So to make all of this optional in parenthesis, you've seen this before, we can add a question mark on the end. So this question mark makes the character before it optional, but since it's all enclosed in brackets, it's making this whole thing in brackets before it optional, okay? So we could have a .co.uk, or we could just have a .co or a .com. So just to quickly go through this again, we've got the your name bit, so something like Sean, at, then the domain, so the net ninja, then a dot, and then the extension, which could be co or com, and then finally the added bit, which is optional, dot uk or something similar. All right, so then let's give this a whirl over here and refresh. I'm gonna just inspect this element so we can see if there's a class added to it at any point. So to begin with, no class, but I'm just gonna say s invalid already. So if we start to type out now, an email, it will only become valid once a valid email address is entered into this field and the match to the regular expression is true. Okay, so Sean at the net ninja dot co dot UK and we get a valid class here or it could be dot com. That's absolutely fine as well. It's still valid, but we can't end it in a dot that's invalid. Um, we can't end it in something that's ridiculous like that. That's invalid or even numbers. This is invalid, but we can do dot com. We could also add in a hyphen right here and this is still valid. Any other symbol and it's not valid. We can't do that here. Only hyphens and letters. Likewise, we could add in a Sean dot something else right here. And this would still be valid because we're allowing dots and also hyphens here, but if we add in something like plus, then it's going to become invalid. All right. So there we go. This is a basic regular expression for an email. Now, just a disclaimer, this will probably not catch every single email. There's a lot of debate for what is the best regular expression for an email. And I've done a fairly simple one here. It captures most of them, to be honest, in my opinion, but it's maybe not the perfect one. And <laughs> a lot of people, believe it or not, argue like mad over what is the best regular expression for an email. So if you do your research, you'll come across different ways of doing this. This is just one way out of very, very, very many. But there you have it. Now we have all of our different fields accounted for, and we're testing them against different regular expressions. So now we've done all that, I wanna do one more thing in the next video, and that's kind of make this look a little bit better and give the user some feedback as to whether their uh, value is valid or invalid because not every user is going to right click inspect element and see if it's valid in the dev tools over here that's not your average user so we'll do something like color the border green or something